Even when companies claim they've got like high-tech, selectively permeable synthetic fabrics, a lot of modern jackets trap moisture and heat inside, which is a big reason why sometimes the way they used to make cold weather coats is still the best way. Enter what I think is the best and most famous wool coat ever, the Made in America Filson Mackinac Cruiser, an absolutely legendary coat. If you don't know this coat, you're probably familiar with the Buffalo plaid coat look. That's because this coat has been imitated countless times but never duplicated. This is the OG coat that launched all the copycats, but the Mackinac Cruiser is still the one that deserves a spot of the best wool coat. It'll never rip, never fall apart, and never fail you. It was first patented in March 1914, although it just buttoned to the sternum back then. They say it was originally made from blankets and used to be long below the knee. Fun fact, when Filson was founded in 1892, they were called C.C. Filson's Pioneer Alaska Clothing and Blanket Manufacturers. This version was out by the 1920s though, and Filson says it was originally designed to protect timber cruisers during long days in the woods. And the bulletproof jacket here soon became a common sight in logging camps. It's also available in charcoal, forest green, and almost black navy, and sometimes some other colors like this cobalt and black one. But this buffalo plaid colorway, which is sometimes called the Pennsylvania tuxedo, is the most iconic version of this extremely iconic jacket. This one actually got second hand on eBay because this is the kind of garment that will last decades and decades. This is an old Mackinac, but it's functional and warm as the day it was made. So as for the details, uh, it's a pretty plain Jane coat. There's nothing really crazy about it. Uh, indeed, that's, that's kind of the point of it. This is a traditional jacket and it just works. Um, but I'll, I'll quickly mention like the pockets. There are nine total pockets, counting the one in the back uh, and also this little pen one at the top on the uh, left front pocket, which makes this jacket like almost double as a bag with all of the, the crap you can fit into it. The front pockets are all snap flap closure. Uh, the ones on the bottom also have hand warm pockets underneath them. And there's, there's really nothing worse than a winter coat without hand warmers. I was very devastated when I got a Parker from Taylor Stitch that didn't have them. Uh, with the top two pockets here on um, the Mackinac, note that the uh, left one here has an extra pocket on top of it for pens and small utility tools. While the one on the right was meant for a compass initially, at least that's what they say. There's also an inside pocket with a spare button on it. And the back of the jacket is double lined. And here you've got the most inventive and unusual thing about this jacket, which is that the whole back of the coat is one gigantic pocket with two snap closure entry points. Uh, I understand this was originally meant for a map, uh, which you can still use it for if you want. I use it for like my gloves, a uh, beanie, a scarf. It really is a very handy. It's like having an extra bag on it. And it's why I don't mind having the extra bulk this jacket has. So let's talk about the material. It's 100% wool. It is 24 ounce virgin wool from a small herd of hardy sheep in the Northwestern United States and Canada. So even the wool is American. I mean, North American, you get it. Uh, it's dense, it's heavy, it's hardy. Uh, I actually saw this review that said, when you pick it up, it definitely feels more like a piece of gear that's going to be there to support your endeavors instead of just a random garment that you found in your hamper. And it is, it is heavy. It feels like you've got a whole sheep sitting on your back. And the weight is also attributable to the fact that the wool is boiled, which shrinks it. So you get all the warmth and toughness of a slightly larger amount of wool, but shrunk down because the weave gets tighter. Now, this is not cashmere and it's not merino. And while I might get in trouble for saying this, this is not comfortable. I mean, I mean, it moves well and it's quiet, uh, unlike a lot of swishy high-tech garments, but this is the scratchy kind of wool, like the kind you might make a carpet out of. Uh, this stuff is not about babying your skin, it's about giving you a thick, tough, decades, probably a century or two of protection of warmth from the elements. Far and away, the biggest downside with this coat is the fact that it is it's unlined, so it's itchy as all hell. And that all that really means is that you need to wear long sleeves underneath it. But unless you're wearing a, a turtleneck or a scarf, it'll itch your neck. You, you get used to it, but um, the itchiness, it's a, it's a little bit annoying. But there are good reasons it's unlined, because this is a coat that breathes extremely well. That is to say, it is unbelievably warm. I can wear this in the coldest New York winters, but it never gets stuffy. Wool has this unique ability to keep you warm in cold conditions without overheating you. I even just wore this outside just now on a kind of unfortunately warm fall day in Times Square. And even though it was warm enough that I was accosted by the naked cowboy, I was barely sweating in it. Like in winter, you'll be warm, but you won't sweat. And sweat is a killer in the winter because it gets your clothes wet. And then, I mean, you're cold for starters, but the sweat can also freeze and put you on a path to hypothermia if you're out in the wilderness. 
So the properties of breathability and insulation are huge for this wool. The range of temperatures in which you can comfortably wear it is much greater than synthetics. It's also naturally water resistant, partly because of the weight and partly because of the lanolin in the wool. So there's no need for a synthetic coating or anything. And even when there's so much water that it doesn't all bead off the coat, like say you're in a serious downpour, this wool can absorb as much as 30% of its own weight without becoming damp or clammy. And wool retains 80 to 90% of its insulation even when soaking wet. So if you get caught in the rain, uh, it's fine. Maybe you don't stand in a tropical downpour for hours, but it really is shockingly good in the rain. And the fact that it can absorb some water can actually be great in that like when you get into the car after getting caught in a shower, you're not shedding everywhere. It's naturally antimicrobial and antibacterial and odor resistant, so you seldom need to clean it. It also won't catch on uh, fire when you're tinkering with a campfire, which is a risk for a lot of synthetic materials. It's also just like really tough. The fibers can be bent and flexed 20,000 times without breaking, and it just won't tear or snag on thorns or sharp branches or anything. Guys everywhere use this for hunting and bushwhacking and yard work. And then they keep using it because the Mackinac endures anything you can throw at it. The only complaint guys have about it besides the itchiness, and I might be a bit sensitive with my skin anyway, so it's probably not gonna be a big deal for a lot of guys. Uh, the only complaint is that it's not the absolute best in the world at wind resistance. It's reasonably wind resistant, but if you're somewhere with a lot of biting icy winds, guys might put a shell over it or like a windbreaker underneath it. All right, for the fit and sizing, uh, this is the classic Alaska fit. For a while, there was a slimmer Seattle fit available, but I don't think it's made anymore. Uh, and this is a size large. And with these coats, the Mackinac, a large, it, it fits like an extra large, you know? They're made big, these coats. And you're meant to buy them big as well, like not sized down. In the store in the East Village here in New York, uh, I insisted that a medium would fit me better, and they laughed in my face. Uh, so I went up getting a large, and I actually like it. I like the fit. I would have been fine with a medium, but there are four reasons why you might want to get like the large fit. I mean, the fit that's larger on your frame. Number one, it's easier to layer. Number two is that it's easier to swing your arms as you're hiking and wood chopping and so forth. That's like meant to be the idea for it, if that's what you're planning to do with it. Number three, it's a thick winter outer layer, which most people wear kind of large. You don't usually see slim parkas on guys or anything. And number four, I like it large because I actually do stuff a lot of beanies and like a scarf and gloves and stuff. I do stuff things in the back compartment here when I'm out and about. Uh, if I had a more form-fitting size, it would look like I had weird growths on my back when I do that. Like it would render the back pocket much less useful. I've even walked around town with a pair of sneakers sitting in the back pocket here and you actually couldn't tell I had them in there. So when you get it big, like I said, you can practically use these pockets as a bag, but of course it's totally up to you how big you want your coat to be. And it'll be fine if you size it down. But if you do, yeah, you wanna go down like a, a size from your normal size if you want to fit like kind of slim like a lot of other jackets. You'll just be sacrificing a little bit of utility of the coat if you do. So first of all, I know I look stupid in this coat uh, because I got a double Mackinac as well on eBay. And I got that before I got my original Mackinac that I had. And because I tried on the large in the East Village and it was so large, I thought it was too big. So I got a medium in the double Mackinac. And uh, I mentioned this partly so you know that if you're thinking about getting the double Mackinac, it is actually smaller than the regular Mackinac. Like a medium Mackinac doesn't fit me like this. This is a medium double Mackinac. The arms are obviously too short on me. Uh, that wasn't the case with the medium regular Mackinac. So while you can size down in the regular Mackinac, if you like a slimmer fit, uh, don't do that for the double Mackinac. You want to do your actual size for that one. <laughs> and uh, the other main reason I mentioned the double Mackinac is so you can just kind of see the differences. But besides the sizing and the different pattern, it's like a little bit blockier. The only main differences are the extra layer of wool here. You can see there's a whole extra layer draped over the top half of the coat and the sleeves are double lined as well. It's much warmer, of course, the double Mackinac. It also looks a lot weirder on you if you get a smaller fit, like a slim fitting double Mackinac. Uh, looks weird and quite top heavy, even if you get the proper one. So uh, yeah, again, don't size down with the double Mackinac. Uh, that's all I got on the double Mackinac. I'm just gonna sell this one on eBay now uh, because I don't want it. Return from whence you came. So if you want a medium double Mackinac, uh, let me know, you can have this one. All right, let's talk about the price. Uh, this coat is $390, and I don't care what anyone says, that's great value. Uh, I know more than one dude who got the Mackinac from his dad and plans to give it to his son. This is like a, an heirloom, like, like family luggage or a great leather jacket or a watch, except it doesn't need any care or upkeep or anything like leather and watches and stuff do. I'm comfortable saying that a lot of Filson stuff, like my $390 backpack, is maybe not overpriced, but more expensive than it needs to be, if that makes sense. Uh, I just don't think that's the case with this gigantic indestructible coat in which you'll never be cold or hot or wet, or like fixing rips and tears, like 
what else do you want? Um, I, I will note here though, that it's not hard to get 10% off at Filson because they're often having a promotion for like, sign up for the newsletter, that kind of thing, and get 10% off. So you've got a decent shot at getting this for about $350. But uh, again, I think $390 is good value. And honestly, I expect Filson to start charging $500 for this in the next few years because they have been increasing prices since they got bought out and because people will pay it. So I think you should get this sooner rather than later. Okay, pros, pros and cons, pros, let's start with the pros. Um, I know most of this review has been saying the pros, but just to sum up, uh, the wool is stupid warm, breathable, well insulated, water resistant, odor resistant, rip and tear resistant, fire resistant. Remember people like beat out fires with wool blankets. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial, I mean, you get it. The wool is great. Uh, it'll take anything you throw at it. It's the incredible Hulk of coats. I'll emphasize here as well, that this jacket is also made in America with North American wool. That's a big deal and uh, it's what convinces a lot of dudes that it's worth the extra money. The build quality, uh, the stitching, the weave of the wool, super dense and the overall attention to detail is all top of the line and worth every penny. And uh, the big map pocket as well in the back, I actually really like as somewhere to keep my scarf and beanie and stuff when I'm out in this cold, but I'm not sure how cold it's gonna be. Uh, and the coat, it's very stylish, man. I mean, it, it looks great. Uh, the bright buffalo plaid here was originally meant to make sure you don't get mistaken for a deer. Uh, I think a lot of guys will find it a great excuse to have a coat that's not black or brown or gray, you know? Uh, the design is both functional and stylish is what I'm trying to say here. Like it looks great out on the town as well, even though it is very good in the outdoors. And lastly, this coat will 1 million percent last you the rest of your life. The rest of your life. The rest of your life. Uh, potential downsides with this coat, it's $390. Um, listen, I don't think that's expensive, which I rarely say for Filson stuff because the only real downside of this extremely cool company is the sticker shock, um, but it's, uh, it's a fine price. Uh, it's, it's more than some basic Patagonia Parker or something, fine, but I think it's good for what you're getting. Uh, it's decent, but not amazing at wind resistance. That's the most common downside you hear. Uh, that some people like they wear windbreakers underneath it or a shell over it. Uh, that's really only if you're like literally walking around frozen tundra or hiking mountains, but a lot of people actually do do that in this coat, so it's worth mentioning. Uh, the second most common complaint I hear is uh, some guys wish the collar was bigger so you could flip it all the way up to your chin, that's, that's totally fair. Uh, it's quite a lot heavier than your average synthetic coat. And finally, and this is the only thing that like uh, bugs me personally about this coat is that it is scratchy as all hell. Uh, it is it is scratchy and it's unlined, so you have to wear long sleeves underneath it. And regardless of your sleeves, it uh, itches your neck. Now, um, I actually can't even wear merino wool because it's itchy to me. So it's very very possible that I'm just like extra sensitive to wool. But uh, it's pretty common wisdom that this coat is uh, it's a little bit itchy on your neck. You get used to it, and you can always wear like a scarf or a turtleneck if it bugs you. Uh, if you're really dedicated, you can always like stitch some corduroy or cotton or something there. Um, but I got used to it, and if I can get used to it with my girly sensitive skin, uh, I'm sure you probably can too. All right, those are my ludicrously extensive thoughts on uh, the Filson Mackinac Cruiser. This is not a jacket, this is the jacket. It's the best wool coat you can get, uh, except it's itchy, but it's still the absolute best. Um, that's it, that's everything. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, I've got plenty more heritage wear, uh, you know, boots, jackets, jeans, that kind of stuff, uh, other videos on that kind of stuff coming up. With the top two pockets on the Mackinac, note that the right one has an extra pocket on top of it. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't it working? And it's the left one actually. Number two, the idea is that it's easy to swing your arms as you're hiking and wood chopping and so forth. <laughs> that looks so stupid. <laughs> okay.